According to Governing Body member David Splain, after the death of the Apostles, there was no organized channel for providing spiritual food to Christians for over 1,900 years. If you take a good, unvarnished look at history, you just do not see a faithful and discreet slave providing food at the proper time. First of all, in the beginning, the source was not available. Next, the attitude toward the spiritual food was not always wholesome. Then there were divisions, tremendous divisions among the reformers, and finally the attitude toward the preaching work. It was a start, but there was no 1900-year-old slave. This raises an interesting question. Before his ascension to heaven, Jesus promised his disciples that he would continue to be with them all the days up until his return. Go therefore and make disciples of people of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you. And look, I am with you all the days until the conclusion of the system of things. Just how was Jesus with his disciples during that entire time? To be true to his promise, wouldn't that mean that he would have provided for them individually, regardless of where they were? But, according to Anthony Morris, a first-century governing body was necessary, in order to serve as a channel for providing spiritual food, establishing congregations and organizing the preaching work. There are people who believe there is no need for a religious organization. They feel they have their own personal relationship with God and that is good enough. They see no need to be associated with a specific organization. However, what does God's own inspired word suggest? That he would use an organization or channel through which spiritual food would be dispensed from his word, the Bible. So it was not a matter of isolated Christians sitting at home claiming to have a personal relationship with God. No. The work was organized and congregations kept being added day by day. But if this arrangement was so necessary, so blessed by God, while the apostles were alive, why did it not continue? The standard answer is that, after their deaths, an apostasy set in, completely obscuring true Christianity. If that is true, it sounds like a victory for Satan. But does that not conflict with Jesus' words? Also, I say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my congregation, and the gates of the grave will not overpower it. So, we have Jesus' words, that he would be with his disciples, all the days until the conclusion of the system of things and that the gates of the grave would not overpower his congregation, which sounds very much like a promise that his congregation would not die out. Not individuals, mind you, but a congregation, which historically did exist, though corrupted, down through the centuries. Is it inconceivable, that Jesus could know and care individually, for sincere Christians, in this corrupt congregation, during all that time? If not, why then, would that have to change, in the late 19th and early 20th century? This is a question that Jehovah's Witnesses and all Christian groups that claim to have restored Christ's congregation on earth today, need to think seriously about.